Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about 10 things you should know before becoming a wife. When I got married, there were so many things people told me to look forward to, and they were totally right. Everything is so lovely about being married. But I also know that there were a few things that I wish that someone had told me before I got married, and I thought I would share with you guys some of those thoughts. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to talk about is the first year of marriage. Now, everybody kind of tells you that you're still in the honeymoon phase during that first year of marriage, and it's true, but one of the things that I noticed is that pretty much on our one year anniversary, I turned to Jacob and I said, oh my gosh, did our marriage just get so much easier? <laughs> Now, marriage isn't hard the first year, but what it is is that it's just a lot of adjustments. You're getting used to living with a new person. You have to get used to their habits, what they like eating, how they like to keep the house clean. And it's so much to get used to all at once. And that can cause a little bit of friction. So when you're getting married, recognize that maybe the first year isn't going to just be daisies and roses all the time. There are times where you're going to be just trying to adjust to living with another person all the time. The second thing that every woman should know before getting married is that your cleanliness level is going to be different than your husband's. <laughs> now, for me and Jacob, the thing for us is that I love when everything is in its place. I like when things are organized, when everything is put away. He doesn't like dust. So I don't like clutter and he doesn't like dirt. So for me, that evens out pretty well, but what it does mean is that he doesn't really mind clutter. So if he comes home and he puts down something on a, on a chair, it might just stay there for a while. <laughs> and that took me a little bit of time to get used to because I would say, oh, why can't you just understand what bothers me? But at the same time, I don't really understand what bothers him. So be forgiving of each other and just recognize that you're going to want things to be clean in a different way than he is. And that's not a bad thing. You'll just even out and you guys will kind of take responsibility for different things around the house. Now, another funny thing, for example, is that my husband, and I've heard this is common, always puts his clothes next to the hamper, not in it, next to it. And I always laugh about that. He did explain the reason to me, which is that we have two hampers and he never knows which one is whites and which one is colors. And sometimes I mix them up because I like to just sort them when I get down to the laundry room. But it's still like, just put it in the hamper. It'll be fine. <laughs> so there are all these kinds of things that you just find out when you get married and they work themselves out. The third thing is that take the time before you're married to learn how to cook. If you don't know how to cook now, then maybe take some time and watch some YouTube videos or ask your mom and get some recipes under your belt. Now, not all wives cook. I can totally respect that. I just love cooking for my husband. I think it's a really nice thing to do. And I found that there are certain recipes that I'm really glad I knew before I got married because I can just throw them in the pot or throw them in the pan and I don't have to think really hard about it. Now, there are times that it's also really fun to kind of explore new recipes after you're married because you figure out what your husband likes. But just having a few things that you just know you can cook up in a few minutes is the best thing because you don't have to worry as much about trying to figure out something on the fly. My fourth piece of advice for women who are about to get married is be mindful of each other's space. Now, not everybody needs space, but most people need at least a little bit of it. And at the beginning of your marriage, it's going to feel like you want to be together all the time. But if your partner needs a little bit of space, that's okay and totally normal. It's nothing against you. He still loves you. And if you need your space, that's also totally normal. People just sometimes need to recharge and they can't be around each other 24-7. So if your husband says he just wants a few minutes to read or play a video game or whatever it is, just be respectful of that because it's so easy to feel offended when someone says that they don't want to be around you for a minute. But when you're married, you're around each other all the time. And it's a totally different thing than when you're dating and when you're together, you're really together. When you're living together and you're married, you're with each other even when you're not with each other. So it's just really important to recognize when you each need a little bit of space. Number five is to take care of your looks. Now, again, this might be, I guess, sort of controversial, but I don't think it is. I think it's really easy when you get married because you're with this person and you know that they love you to just not take care of yourself as much. And even for your own sake, that can start to feel a little bit bad. So for me, it's important to, you know, shave my legs. Well, now I epilate, but <laughs> when I shaved, shave. 
and to get my hair cut and to keep up with my makeup routine and just to keep yourself looking nice because it means something to your husband and it'll mean something to yourself. And at least for me, I feel so much better when I just take a few minutes in the morning, do my hair, do my makeup, put on a nice outfit, and keep myself looking nice and put together. And I think that husbands really appreciate that too because they don't want to ask you to put on makeup. And a lot of men don't like makeup. My husband actually doesn't, but <laughs> they don't wanna ask you to kind of shave your legs. I mean, if your legs aren't shaven, they're not gonna say anything maybe, but they also would maybe like it for you to shave. So keeping those things in mind and just trying to like look nice for your partner as if you're still dating is a really nice thing to do. Number six is it's okay to change for your partner. I know, how crazy is that to say? <laughs> now, let me be clear what that means. When you get married, your partner really wants the best for you and for the life that you're building together. And sometimes they may notice things about you that you could work on. And if they ask you to work on something, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that they don't love you for who you are. It means that they love you for who you are and who you could be, the best version of yourself. And I think that the best marriages and partnerships and friendships are the ones where you're accountable to each other. So when I say change, I really just mean let your partner come to you and tell you that there are certain things that they're noticing that you could do better. That's okay and maybe try and implement them. Of course, you have to be respectful to each other, and of course, you can do the same thing to your partner. You can say there are certain things that I think that you should improve on, but those are things that shouldn't be off the table. You should definitely be able to talk to your partner, and he should be able to talk to you about how the two of you can improve together as a team and as individuals. My seventh piece of advice is to make your house a home. Now, it is the nicest feeling in the world, at least for me, to go to Home Goods and TJ Maxx and home decor stores and just take my time to pick out things and decorate my house. And I think that my husband really appreciates that, even if he doesn't really notice it at first. There's something about being in a home that is lived in by a woman. There's a really feminine vibe that you bring to your home that your husband wouldn't have without you there. So take advantage of that. Make his house your house and make it a home that he's so happy to come home to because it's warm and loving and cozy. My eighth piece of advice is that you can still be friends with your single friends. <laughs> I've heard from a lot of single women that they get really nervous when their friends get engaged and are getting married because they don't know if they're still gonna be able to maintain that friendship. I can say from my experience being married, I have friends who are not married and we have definitely stayed in touch. My husband has friends that are not married and they've definitely stayed in touch. And taking the time to reach out to those single friends will really mean a lot to them and to you. Just because they're at a different point in their lives doesn't mean that you can't still stay friends. You can learn something from each other, which I think is so important. And so I love being friends with everybody who I knew before I was married. So just taking the time to show your single friends that things don't have to change. Of course, they're going to change a little bit because you're gonna have to go cook your husband dinner or hang out with him or you're gonna be on date night or whatever it is. But your actual relationship with your girlfriends doesn't have to change and you can still go out with them every once in a while on your own. You don't necessarily have to take your husband along and have her be a third wheel. You can still go out with your girlfriends just the two of you and that's totally fine. Number nine is you should let your home be welcoming to your husband's friends. Now your husband is probably going to want his friends to come over sometimes and you don't want it to feel like he's not allowed to because then he'll feel like he has to leave his home to have his male friendships. And I think it's a really nice thing for a man to be able to bring home his friends, for you to be a part of that. My husband is so wonderful about this. When he has his friends over, he actually invites me to be included in board game nights or video games or whatever it is so that I can participate. But there are times where I don't want to participate and that's totally fine. And I don't mind going in the other room and reading a book and he can hang out with his guy friends. But I want him to feel like our home is really our home so he can bring his friends and I can bring my friends and both of us feel like it's totally welcoming space for both of us and not a place where you're not allowed to bring home people that you enjoy their company and friends that you wanna play cards with and stuff like that. So just make your home as welcoming a space for both of you that you can. Number 10, and my last piece of advice, is that it's totally normal to argue. 
just make sure that your arguments are for a purpose. Don't argue with each other and start getting on each other's case and criticizing each other about who you are and just yelling for no reason. Arguments should always have a purpose and they should always be used to help your relationship grow and to come to a resolution. Don't just fight to fight and never say something that you can't take back. So always be very mindful in an argument not to say something in the heat of the moment that your partner can't unhear. It's really hard when you are upset to keep that in mind, but it's very important. The worst arguments are the arguments where you are just tearing down each other. That's never useful, and I don't think that that is a good idea in marriage. But if you have to disagree about a big topic, that's normal and okay. And it's also normal to disagree about something little as long as you guys are respectful during that disagreement. So don't feel like everything is just going to be easy breezy and no arguments ever and you only talk about rainbows and butterflies. No, there are times that there are going to be disagreements and that's totally fine, but just keep them respectful and it'll all work out. What are your guys' pieces of advice from being married, from dating, just anything that has to do with relationships and stuff like that? I'd really love to hear. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please subscribe to my blog and my channel if you haven't already. Head over to my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and follow me there, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!